Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com uh, nightly update show. Uh, it's actually the weekend update show. It is Friday. Uh, it is Good Friday. Uh, again, I want to wish uh, everybody who is uh, observing Easter very, very happy uh, Easter Sunday. And for all the rest of you folks who are not, uh, hopefully you'll get a nice, uh, long, relaxing uh, three day weekend so before we get started guys thank you very much for all your viewership before uh bring you to the channel uh please like share subscribe come aboard uh take this journey with us for unbiased uh, view of technical analysis so let's talk about this so if you watch the video uh this week uh you know you, we talked about the you know the importance of understanding your surroundings uh 1740 that 31740 level on the queues was uh, an area that we were watching just because the market felt a little bit heavy uh, a little bit heavy towards the middle of the week you started seeing uh decreasing channels of contraction channels in some of the leaders the microsoft's of the world uh the apples of the world you know around tuesday wednesday and we talked about the importance of this five-day moving average that if the queues lost uh the 31740s there's a high probability that again if you believe in uh, the whole theory of stocks trade from the supply, supply, and demand to demand, that when you, that there's a strong possibility that if we lost the uh, 317.40s level, we were going to get down to the 313 level, which is the rising 10-day moving average. I talked about it on uh, X amount of videos, and that's exactly the way it played out uh, towards the end of the week. Um, gravity kicked in. Again, We, you know, I wasn't calling for Armageddon, and this was the top of the market. Again, we, we're trading day-to-day. -day. I'm not trying to guess... Uh, what's going to happen a month from now or three weeks from now. I'm trying to just to, to take the data, uh, use the pivot points that uh, I've created uh, since 2011, 2012, and kind of just take advantage of the price action just from day to day. That's it. Uh, we trade long, we trade short. Uh, it's all about taking control uh, of the data points and waiting for uh, confirmation. So the market had a nice uh, organic pullback. We took advantage of that pullback from that uh, 317.40, uh, into this 310 rising 10 day support. Uh, the bulls uh, you know, did a pretty good job. It, it, that was literally the low from Friday uh, to uh, 312.82. Uh, Bullard came on, started, you know, started making some uh, comments. The market rallied. And in the process, the bulls uh, reclaimed the 10 day moving average. And now we're just, you know, one, you know, one or two days away from possibly reclaiming the five day moving average, which was the, well, we, we, that was the 319 level we talked about Wednesday. And you can see here, uh, Wednesday's high was 319. Uh, yesterday's highs was uh, 318.55. So for the bulls uh, going into this week, for the bulls to kind of keep this momentum going, kind of holding uh, the 10-day moving average, they're going to have to reclaim uh, 319, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, the five-day moving average again, which is the shortest term sentiment. Uh, if the bears want to, you know, make a little bit of a stronger push into uh, another potential back test uh they're gonna need to uh close below this 313 so 319 to the upside uh 313 to the downside and if we start reclaiming 319 then we go back to uh risa highs around that 322 level if we reclaim the 313 on a the close then we're talking about 310 uh 308 for a natural uh back test uh if you look at the numbers this week you know nothing really uh stands out you have the dow up six tenths of a percent. Uh, you have the Nasdaq down 1.1 percent just because of the Q's back test and the S and P 500. Again, granted, uh, all these banks are still there. Remember, you know that they're predominantly the representation of the S and P 500. The S and P was flat. Again, it's a very, very bullish statement. How uh, no matter how much news comes out, you can start seeing uh, a little bit of a calming effect now in the last uh, month or so. Uh, since all this news came out about the banks with SBB and uh, four different banks closed down, we're starting to get numb, right? We're starting to get numb. We're starting to get calmer. Uh, you're starting to get less headlines. Of course, the worry is still out there. There's there's another shoe uh, that potentially could drop. But you have to really like uh, from the point of price action that the market has still not uh, really, uh, you know, really caved in. You had a couple of days of jittering prices, right? You had a couple of days of jittering prices and the bulls, reclaim back the 50-day moving average, and then there's a huge disconnect between the NASDAQ 
uh, and uh, the S and P, and especially uh, the Dow. Uh, since there's no market uh, ar market action today, the market is closed. Uh, you had a couple of bits of news coming out. Number one, you had the jobs number coming out for March. Uh, unemployment rates fell 3.5%. I'm just literally reading this out. Um, unemployment rates fell 3.5%. This came out 45 minutes ago. 236 jobs, uh, 236,000 jobs uh, were created uh, in March. Again, we'll see how the market reacts to that. Uh, number on Monday. Uh, yesterday, though, you had a two couple of pieces of information that could impact the tech sector. Uh, you had Samsung coming out and said they're significantly going to uh, reduce the output of their chips. And if you saw why, uh, they came out and 96% uh, profit plunge for Samsung. Is that going to affect Apple? Is that going to affect uh, the other chips? We'll see on, uh, you know, we'll see on Monday. Uh, also combined with kind of not not a related story with Samsung, but Apple uh, did see some really really aggressive um, um, sell sell sign insider selling uh, over the last couple of weeks. Does that have any, anything to do uh, with the whole uh, spectrum of production with the, you know the whole industry view? We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. So you had uh, you had Samsung coming out with a crappy profit uh, plunge of ninety six percent. You have a jobs number that we have to. Uh, kind of well, you guys have to. I don't have. I don't have to <laughs> decipher anything. I just trade price action. Uh, you know, you could, you could, you, you know, you could spend your weekends debating with somebody on social media what happened with the jobs number. Uh, I'm going to enjoy myself. But uh, also, a big story that came out uh, after the close uh, yesterday was uh, Tesla. Right. First of all, uh, Tesla was a great, great trader this week. We talked about the importance of the 50-day moving average. It lost the 50-day moving average. Went from. Uh, that 290 level all the way down, excuse me, the 190 level all the way down to 180. Uh, so really, really good trader on Tesla. But uh, they did come out uh, with another round of cuts, okay, uh, into their price production points uh, to kind of spur demand in the United States. We'll see uh, how the market uh, reacts from there. But ultimately, you know, ultimately, you know, the big picture, right, if you kind of stand back and big picture, and again, we know the market's not going to go straight up. We also know the importance of what happened on January 6th. That was the bottom, January 11th, that sparked up this whole rally. Uh, so we know the big picture is still the bulls are in control. They continue to, um, you know, they continue to kind of brush off bad news on a macro scale. And the big picture still is higher. So if the bulls can reclaim the five-day moving average, uh, there's a lot of really good looking charts uh, to deal with. If they start breaking down and start confirming the 10, then obviously uh, we're going to be focused on uh, the downside as well. But again, taking one day at a time. You know, again, when I, when I talk about when I talked about that 1740, I wasn't saying, well, this is it. This is the top of the market. We were just taking advantage again, taking advantage of the price action for the next day. It lasted for a couple of days. And here we are right here. We are with a new game plan. Uh, I always encourage traders over the weekend. Uh, to go through charts, right? Go through a lot of charts, 500,000 charts uh, for the weekend, uh, even if you don't know what you're looking for. And this is a very, very uh, important point. Even if you don't know what you're looking for and you're a brand new trader and you're a novice, um, start looking at charts. You're going to see a lot of similarities to price action where stocks stopped, where they started. That's kind of how I kind of uh, created the PS60 theory uh, about 11, 12 years ago probably 12 years ago, um, and the most important part is you start seeing muscle memory, right? Subconsciously, you start seeing muscle memory. So even if you don't know what you're looking at, eventually things will start to click and you'll start seeing a lot of common denominators when a stock breaks out, when a stock stalls, and when a stock uh, fails its breakout and starts uh, breaking down to the bottom side of demand. So it's just something that you continuously uh, continuously want to work on. And, and again, I, I've, I've said this uh, I, I've said this for many, many times. Uh, again, new traders, you don't need a, you don't need motivation. How much more motivation do you need in life, right? You don't need motivation. You need a process. You need work ethic. Uh, and you need to cut out the noise and omit all the negativity in your life so you can stay focused and tackle uh, the, the the task at hand. Because remember, this is this is an unforgiving business. You don't get a mulligan. You don't get a second chance. Your hard-earned money is on the line every single day. I don't care if you're trading for a week or you're trading for you know 24 years like I'm going on to, you know, your money is as green as everybody else. So make sure you be a better friend to your money and make sure you're really know understanding what you're doing. Because again, if you're playing checkers, you're playing chess against really exaggerated uh, people who've been doing this for a very long time. And unfortunately, they will take your money and they're gonna take your money with a smile on your face. So please put yourself in a position to work because whatever you t you know put into this business, you are going to take out, and it's very very important to come uh, prepared every day. If not, 
Uh, don't even bother uh, putting on your computer because, again, you are in a tremendous disadvantage against people uh, who've been doing this for a very long time. So continuously to work, right? Work, work, work. So going into this week, again, I'm always prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, let me give you guys some upside plays. Let me give you guys some downside plays. And we'll start from there. We just talked about uh, the cues. Uh, Google continues to be in a, just a rock star, right? Absolute rock star uh, on all these uh, all these stocks. You know, the stock, if you guys remember on Monday's video, it broke out above, above the 104 level and really never, you know, never turned back. This thing uh, broke out on Friday. Uh, you know, if the market continues to be good, uh, keep an eye on this thing for Friday, either from Monday uh, above Friday's range or a dip, right? We always we're always looking for dips. And again, these are these are bad wicks on e-signal. But if you could get into the if you could get into the rising support, especially at the open, you always want to look. You always try to buy strong stocks that broke out the day before on dips uh, at the open. Uh, Microsoft just went out of its mind, uh, just completely engulfed. Once it held the 10-day moving average, completely engulfed three days worth of selling. Close at the highest point. Same, you know, same, um, same point of reference from Google. You want to see if you could buy this thing uh, on dips. Um, Apple again. I want to see how Apple responds to uh, the Samsung news, but a Apple is kind of mirroring uh, the the Nasdaq 100. As you can see here, Al Apple's gotten rejected back to back days on the five day moving average. If Apple can finally uh, get above the five day moving average, you should see. Uh, new highs as well. And again, I, I'm still watching, you know, I've been trading Tesla now for the last three, four days to the downside. It's a phenomenal move, absolutely phenomenal move. Uh, I want to see how, number one, it handles the news of uh, additional deep price cuts uh, going into uh, Monday. But if it starts taking down the bottom of the channel here this week, I'm definitely, definitely interested because again, look how much room we still have here. Uh, so it's something that uh, I want to uh, continue to monitor. Obviously, I watch this thing every single day. Uh, ARLO has been uh, a name, you know, has been grinding really, really nice. For all you guys, I know I covered this. Uh, I, I, I've been long this thing for like three, four days. Beautiful breakout here uh, from the 20 area. It just keeps on grinding and grinding and grinding. Hopefully, it finally has uh, is this expansion day. And one little stock I want to give you guys, uh, keep an eye on this thing. Uh, the stock is MTTR. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I don't have a position in this thing. Um, on Friday, they were coming for the May 19th $4 calls over and over and over again. Again, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. But watch this, you know, watch again. It's not going to be a day trade. It's going to be probably like, you're probably going to be in this thing for like two, three weeks. But keep an eye on this thing. If this thing could finally start taking out this top of the channel here where, where it got rejected now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in a row, maybe it finally starts waking up. Again, if you're betting... The four dollar calls with about a month of exp uh, month till expiration, month and a half till expiration. I know this. Does somebody know something? Well, I mean, obviously somebody knew something uh, with the WWE, right? A month ago, a guy came in. Uh, a guy came in for five million dollar premium when the stock was at eighty two dollars for the hundred calls, right? For the April hundred calls, yada yada yada. They got taken over, or at least merged at one hundred six dollars uh, a share. So that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, if you are, uh, if you've been uh, considering, if you've been watching this broadcast and been considering. Uh, to see uh, if pivots are a good fit for you. Uh, again, I broadcast a Monday through Friday. I speak for six hours a day. Um, like I've been saying, I don't think pivots are for everybody. You have to be very, very patient. There's a lot of moving parts. But if you've been on the fence and you want to try out uh, the pivots again, you know, stop by the webinar, uh, the live, you know, live webinar. Uh, I speak for six hours a day. We trade. We sh we sh we share the screen. Everything, everything that you could possibly get under the sun. Uh, to put yourself in a situation to make an educational decision if this is the right process for you. Uh, I think I can speak for a lot of people uh, in the webinar. Uh, it is pretty cool. And obviously, you guys uh, seen we've been doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, other than that, guys, I want to wish everybody once again a happy, uh, happy long weekend. Um, awesome Easter, right? Awesome Easter and cherish this time with your loved one and friends. Again, we only have one life. We don't get a mulligan. Guys, stay blessed. God bless. And I will see you all on Monday. Take care.